Hi, this is Mark from Wicked Design. In this Jet Engine tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Dynamic Repeater widget. This widget is going to help you display dynamic content like this right here. It says Free Guides on your website and give you full control over how you can lay it out and any sort of styling. So as you can see on this one, I have it where the user can go ahead and click any one of these three guides. And this is all using the Dynamic Repeater. And so this is what it's gonna look like on the back end. So as you can see, that one was just called France. We have some regular information up here, but what we're gonna be focusing on in this tutorial is this section right down here called the repeater field. So this is where the user can actually go ahead and upload those three PDFs. In this example, I have like travel guide one, a link to the PDF, you can open up this one, and you know, one, two, and three. And so that gets displayed right here. So that's using a dynamic repeater field. So now I'm gonna jump into the back end of the website and show you how I have everything set up and how you can add this to your own website. And here we are in the back end of that website and I always like to show the plugins that I have installed on this website. So as you can see, I'm just using Elementor, Elementor Pro and Jet Engine. That's all you're gonna to need to be able to pull off that type of functionality is just those three plugins. So I always like to show the version numbers and just how everything's set up. Okay, so the first thing is you need to go ahead and create a custom post type. So if you already have it a custom post type, you can always add a repeater field later. So in this example, I have a custom post type just called locations, and I have like six different locations inside of here. And the only one I populated right now for the demo was just the one called France. So when you go inside of here, like I said, we're gonna be focusing on this repeater field right here and how you can add this and then how it gets rendered out to the front end of a website. So now we can jump over into the post type and I'm gonna show you how I was able to set that up. So just go underneath your post type and if you haven't created one, you can just click uh, add new and just kind of follow the tutorial. So in this one, I already have one called locations. So you just type in your name right here. This is the um, custom post type slug is just called locations. And then I like to click this button where it says hide meta field names. Um, all that means is on the back end of the website, it's not gonna render out all of the different uh, meta field names. It makes it a little less cluttered in my opinion. So what we're gonna be focusing on in this tutorial is if you jump out over into your meta fields down here, this is where you're gonna go ahead and add your repeater. So just go ahead and click add um, new media field. And let me expand the one I have here and you can just follow along. So in this situation, I'm just calling it travel guides. And then this is gonna be the meta field name for the repeater. It's called travel underscore guides. So what I recommend is open up a clipboard and actually just copy all of your meta field names now, because later in the tutorial, you're gonna reference this stuff. So just go ahead and copy that one to your clipboard. And then underneath your object type, you just keep it as field. And then this is the most important thing is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you choose repeater. So as soon as you choose repeater, you're gonna get more kind of like meta fields inside the repeater. So inside of here, I just have one called name and PDF. So this is gonna give the user the ability to add a name and then upload a PDF. So for the label, I'm just calling it name. You can call it whatever. You can call it like travel guides, name, you know, whatever. I just wanna keep it very simple, just name. And copy this one to your clipboard. We're gonna be referencing this later. So when you see it on the front end, that right there is gonna be the name, which is like travel guide one, that's gonna be referencing from this ID. And then just keep this one as text if you wanna have it where the user can type in something. And then the next one is PDF. So underneath here, I'm just calling the label PDF and the name is PDF. So like I said, copy that to your clipboard, we'll reference it in a little bit. And then for the type, it's just gonna be media. This is gonna give the user the ability to upload something to your media library. And then underneath here where it says media URL, just make sure you have that one uh, selected. And then down here, you can uh, choose this button if you want collapsed. You can see right here, it toggles the option to collapse repeater items on page load. So it doesn't have them all like expanded, so it's kind of more condensed when you get to it. And then this one is optional, but I do recommend adding something here at least. This is your title field. So this right here is your title. So if you don't have that option on or tag it to something, it's not gonna render out anything right here. So you're gonna probably select that. And so what this is gonna do is just choose a title field from something else you have up here. So the one called name. So as soon as you add one up here, that should be an option to select. And then the rest of it is just kind of optional. You can choose it to be 50% width, 100%, however you want it. This is all just gonna be how it looks right here inside of this dashboard. So after you do that, just go ahead and click update post type. Now what we're gonna be doing is focusing on how we laid this out and actually pull this information in. So now that you have your custom post type, what I recommend is go ahead on the very first one and just add some information in there. It could just be a placeholder text for now, whatever it may be, but we need something to kind of visually see. And so we need to actually have some values in here. So in this, say, in this case, I already have three of the travel guides inside of the France. 
So now what we need to do is build out the listing template right here, and then we're gonna have a grid and display it you know, on, on your page like this. So now we need to jump over into Jet Engine underneath listings, and you're gonna go ahead and just click add new item. And then underneath here, just keep the first one at post. You're gonna scroll down until you see your custom post type called locations or whatever it may be. Give it a unique name. And then in this case, we're just gonna be using Elementor. And then you're gonna go ahead and click uh, create listing item. And here we are on the back end of my listing. You can see right here, I already have all this dynamic information in here. So if you're kind of brand new to listings and listing grids inside of Crockleblock or Jet Engine, um, in order to keep this tutorial short, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below of a detailed video on how you can create something just like this, you know, all using Jet Engine. So what we're gonna be focusing on is this widget right here called the dynamic repeater. So if you just go into your Elementor over here and just type in the word dynamic, you can see that there's a whole widget that Jet Engine has specifically just for this called dynamic repeater. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is click and drag that in here. And now I'm gonna show you how I was able to lay it out just like this. And once you pull that widget in, you're gonna see underneath source, you need to choose the one that we just created. So you should see your custom post type, like in this example we'll called locations. And then that's the repeater that we're called travel guides. So you just go ahead and click that. And then this is where you're gonna go ahead and actually display how this information comes in. So by default, it, you, it's probably gonna look just like this. It's gonna look like this. And then underneath style, you can see right here, if you start from scratch, this is probably how it's gonna look. It's gonna all be inlined. But what's cool about this dynamic repeater is that they give you this option to go either horizontal or vertical. So depending on how you want it displayed, in this case, I wanna have like bullets. And so that's why I wanted to have it stack like that. And as you can see right down here, they give you a little information. You can render this repeater field values with macros. So you just choose the name of the macro. So in this case, it's the repeater field name. In order to grab that, what you need to do, if you haven't copied that to your clipboard, is go back into your post type. Underneath your repeater field, that's what this is right here. So you could just type in name right here or this other one just called PDF. So if I go back into here, you just need to put that little... Um, percentage sign in front and behind it. That's what is called a macro. And if you need more information on this, they have a lot of good resources. So on the bottom of that page, there's a need help button. And you can see right here, they give you a huge list, uh, all the different ways that you could pretty much display repeater information. So you can uh, display it like I'm gonna display it in a, like in a list. You can display it like this stacked on top of each other with divs. You could do pretty much any sort of layout. So you are gonna need to know a little bit of like HTML and CSS to really get a customized layout. But that's what's really powerful about this widget is that there really is no limitation. It's really just however much CSS and HTML you wanna throw at it, it's gonna render it all out correctly. So tons of good information on here, but I'm just gonna cover out how I was able to display it like in a listing. And now I zoomed in right here so you can see exactly the code I used. And I'll leave this code in the description below if you just wanna copy and paste it. And then you can just change out these two fields right here called PDF and name. So this is all just using very, very simple HTML. So we just have a, a list right here, a UL. You open it up with an, a list tag, and then we're using an href, and then inside of here, that PDF link. So whatever the user is gonna be uploading right here underneath the uh, PDF right here, that's where this name is right here. So you're gonna, like I said, you can always copy this stuff to your clipboard. It makes it a lot easier. So you just paste that in here, uh, you wrap it around your little percentages, so your macro is always going to look like that. And then this is just HTML saying open that up inside of a new tab. And then you're just going to be displaying the name, that field right here. And then that's it. You just need to close out the A tag right here, close out the list. And then right there, everything is just automatically going to add the bullets. So now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you can, like I said, this option right here, if it looks like that, you need to make sure you click this button right here. It's like vertical. And so it's going to display like that. You could do however you want it displayed. You can some options right here. You can change the text size right here. So you can see right here. And then underneath here is where you can start to change out some colors. So let's just do an example. Let's say I want to have the bullets in the text as this blue color. So let me go ahead and show you an example of something that might not work correctly unless you know a little bit of CSS. So as you can see right here, I changed that to blue. And so the only thing that changed was the bullet colors. The text didn't change the blue. So let me show you why that's happening. And if you've already configured it up inside of Elementor underneath your site settings right here, there's already like a global link color going across the whole website. So now you're gonna have to override that with a little bit of CSS. 
So inside of my site settings right here, I just click this button right up inside of here. And if you go underneath your typography settings, there's this option right here called link. So that's what this link color is coming from. Uh, Elementor is overriding like kind of like the default widget. But you, now what you need to do is if you want to keep your global links as one color inside of that new uh, widget we just pulled in, we need to actually override that. So as you can see right here, it's pulling in the black color, but we want that to look blue. So I just wanted to show that's where it's coming from is right there. So it's really simple to actually go ahead and change that color if you want. So if you just go back into your repeater widget, and if you go underneath advanced and underneath custom CSS, you could just type in selector. So what that's gonna do is only select this custom font color inside of that one widget. And you just hit A, and then we need to do some brackets, and we just do color, and then that's the blue color I have right there. And then you just need to close out the brackets. And that's it. So now this widget, that little CSS, is going to override what you put in right here in the site settings. So if you do need to do something like that, you can always go ahead and do that. And then underneath here, you can always go ahead, if you want to have that like underlined, you can go ahead and do underline right here. We can make it a little bit smaller, you know, whatever you want to change. So I just wanted to show that you can target just the colors if you need of the text. And now if I go back into this section right here under content, you can just kind of keep everything else by default. I just have the item HTML tag as div, but they give you the option to do like tables or lists. But in this case, let's keep it as div. And then this is a pretty good one is hide if value is empty. So it's going to hide that information if it's if there's nothing inside of that post. So if nobody uploads any travel guides or anything like that to another location, it won't show at all. But let's go ahead and actually publish this. And now let me show you on the page how you can go ahead and add this grid right here. And it's really simple. You're just gonna go to a page, just type in listing, and just pull in the listing grid right here. So that's what I have. And you're just gonna go ahead and choose the listing that we just called it. So that one was just called like locations list. And then you probably gonna wanna do one column if you have a layout similar to mine where you have like a left column with an image, you know. So in this case, one column made the most sense. And then you can keep like equal column heights. You know, there's a few options inside of here, but we're just mainly focusing on this right here. So once you go ahead and hit publish, you can view this page on the front end and you can see that these are the travel guides and they're gonna open up right here. So that was travel guide one, travel guide two. So that's all working correctly. And if you had that option where it was um, not gonna show if it's empty, it's just gonna be blank right down here. So now I'm gonna show you how you can use the jet engine dynamic conditions in order to actually show or hide this type of information uh, if it's kind of nested in something else, like an accordion or something like that. So let me give you a quick example of what I mean by that. So the first thing is you need to go underneath your jet engine and make sure that you have dynamic visibility toggled on. Just go ahead and hit save. And now what I'm gonna do is add an accordion to this page. And then I wanted to actually only show it if it's, you know, if there's actually information inside of there. So let me go on to this listing right here and add an accordion. And now what I'm gonna do is add an accordion called travel guides and then it will actually expand right here. So let me show you why you might wanna use something like the dynamic visibility. So let me just go ahead and click and drag in an accordion and let's get rid of these last two right here and we're gonna call this one like travel guides, something very simple right here. And now we need to actually drag in this widget we created right inside of here so as you can see, we have our accordion here on the right side. We have that one called item one, which is this right here. And then we just added the dynamic repeater. So the user is gonna be able to actually toggle on and off. So let me go ahead, update this and show you the issue you might have if you are gonna be doing sort of like dynamic visibility type of stuff. So now if I hit refresh on this page, you're gonna see that that first one works good. So the user can actually expand if there's travel guides and it shows right here inside of an accordion. But here's the issue is these ones don't have anything inside of them. So now we can use that dynamic visibility to basically show or hide if, the, if these exist or don't. In order to use that dynamic visibility on just the accordion, you're just gonna wanna click on the accordion widget underneath advanced, underneath right here where it says dynamic visibility, click the button enabled, and then show if conditions uh, let's say exist. So all you need to do is just basically say if this ID right here of travel guides, travel underscore guides exist, show that whole widget. If not, don't show it at all. And if we go back into our post type, I'll show you where to get that. So that would be right here. So the main repeater uh, meta field right here, that's what this ID is right here. So you're going to want to copy that 
and then add it into your uh, dynamic visibility right here and just hit update. So now on this page, it should automatically hide all the other ones. So as you can see right here, it's not gonna show if that doesn't have any information in them. So they're automatically not gonna show. And one cool thing about the newest accordion inside of Elementor, if you go underneath the content interactions, default state, you could do collapse. So if you wanna have it where the first one's expanded, you could do that. If you want to probably have it, none of them are actually gonna be open. I like having that option inside of here. So let's go ahead and actually do an example. And on the next one for Ireland, let's just go ahead and add a few in there and show you that you can actually reorder these things. So if we go to Ireland, I'm gonna go down here and I'm just gonna do guide one. And I already have this one right here. And let's just do guide two and just do something like that. This is all just like demo information and then hit save. So now if I go back into this page, we should see that that's gonna show up right here. And you can see guide one, guide two, that one automatically has those. And then of course, these are all emptied down here. Now what's really cool about the repeater field is you can actually move these things around much easier. So if for some reason you wanna have guide two at the top, you just click and drag that up here and that's it. So now on this page, if I go underneath Ireland, guide two should be at the top. So if I click that, you could see how easy it is to go ahead and you know, you could change the names of these things, reorder them, whatever it may be. And that's it for this video on how to use the dynamic repeater widget inside of JetEngine. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design, and thank you for watching.